This is William's third Math Night presentation, and I'm sure you can guess about him, is that he loves to think about math, and he loves to think about math at, at a really high level. One of the things that um, I really enjoy about William is that William's not content to just think about math on a high level or, or talk with other people who think about math at a high level. He is passionate about making sure that um, the math that he understands is really accessible to other people. And so he's going to, as the, as the slide shares, try to welcome us all into the fourth dimension. So William. <laughs> I'd love to extend a huge thank you to Jamie and Natalie for making this presentation possible and for really helping me find it. Um, so today I want to uh, I, I want to at least give you a taste of the fact that um, you really can understand four-dimensional space. Um, and the, the, the reason that I'm giving this presentation is that um, for a few years now I've seen uh, animations that look like this <coughs> circulating around the internet. And this claims to illustrate uh, a four-dimensional cube. Now, I don't know about you, I don't know if you've seen this, I don't know um, what your reaction to it was, but the first time I saw this, I just absolutely panicked, because <laughs> this, is a, this is a terrifying animation. Um, it leaves you with many more questions than answers, and, um, and, and it makes the four dimension look unbelievably intimidating. So I have to answer some of those questions and to convince you that the, four, the fourth dimension um, really does make sense. Um, and, uh, and, 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 and more generally, um, I'm doing this because, uh, because I, I believe that, that everything can be made intuitive and can, and can be understood. Um, and uh, and, and, and to, to, to say this perhaps even better than I can, um, I love, uh, I, I just recently finished reading a, a science fiction novel, which is now one of my favorite novels of all time, um, which uh, has a scene in it in which uh, our group of intrepid heroes are getting ready to explore actually a five-dimensional universe. And um, one of the characters is a little bit apprehensive about this, um, and because uh, he's at an exhibition, a lot like this one actually, that's explaining what they're going to find in this universe. Um, and this is what the other character says to them. They say, uh, nothing is beyond understanding, um, and after a hundred more exhibitions, uh, you'll be dreaming in five dimensions. Now I find this, I find this absolutely inspiring. I love the idea here. We don't have time for 100 exhibitions tonight, so I can't promise you dreaming in five dimensions, but I hope to at least give you a taste of what it's like to dream in four. Um, so when I talk about a fourth dimension, what do I actually mean by that? Um, and, and why is it useful? Where does it come from? Well, uh, a, a dimension is just a way that things can, can move or be different or be separated from each other. And when we talk about the fourth dimension, what, what we're usually talking about is, is time. And in fact, in, in physics, it is very common to treat time as a fourth dimension, but that's not the only way to do it. Um, for, a, uh, for a mathematician, or particularly uh, someone doing geometry or, or topology, um, it's often very useful to just think about the fourth dimension as just one more dimension of space. There's nothing special about it, it's just one more way to move. Um, but uh, fourth dimensions also come up in, in, in unexpected places. Um, in computer graphics, it's very common to treat a color, not just as um, the red, green, blue components that our eyes see in our screens display, uh, but also as, as, as an opacity that tells you how see-through or how, how transparent the color is. And whenever you're doing any kind of data analysis or, or statistics, and, and Kevin knows this, um, it's, it's extremely common to have a data set where every entry in the data set has four or five or sometimes a hundred different numbers in it, and each one of those can be thought of as a dimension, and it's often useful to think about that way. And, and there's many other cases in which four-dimensional spaces come up. Um, but today we're just going to focus on, on understanding four-dimensional space and, and the geometry of four-dimensional space. Um, and the tool that we're going to use for that is, uh, if, if, if you take one thing away from this presentation tonight, it should be that uh, gaining an intuition for something unfamiliar by analogy is an unbelievably great tool. It, it's extremely effective. It's no substitute for rigorous math, and it, and it can lead you wrong. Um, but it, but if, if, you're, if you're in unfamiliar territory, it's a wonderful place to start. Um, and what that means is that we're going to be starting with, with things in three dimensions and then building that up to four. Um, so as a little appetizer to convince you that you can actually understand four-dimensional space, um, we're going to talk about something that's, that's very um, basic in, in, in geometry, and that, 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 that's, that's very basic in the concept of space, which is the idea of a surface. Um, and in 3D, a surface just means basically start with a flat plane and then add some height to it. Um, and we can think of a surface as being you know, some sort of ripply, ripply plane like this, where, where its shape has been changed by adding the height. But that, that step of adding the height, since it happens at the end, you, you can think about it as doing different things. You can think about it as changing the shape of the surface. Or you can think about it as, as associating something with every point in the space, like, like a color. And this is another picture that also lets you see the same surface 
um, and, and, and actually answer the same questions about the surface if you just know how to interpret it. Um, so, for example, if I drop a marble down on the surface, um, which way do you, do you think it's going to roll? Any fingers? Toward the blue? It, it's going to roll towards the blue. Um, and, and one rule we can use to figure that out is that um, it's going to roll uh, downhill. But, but you're right that we can, we can rephrase the rule saying that it's going to roll, that, that things always roll from red to blue when red is, is higher and blue is lower. Um, so so, so these, these pictures can, can help us get the same sense for a, for a surface as seeing its, its shape, and, and yes, it will roll that way. Um, so let's extend this to 40. Um, imagine that you, so, so in, in, in four dimensions, the surface has, has a similar, or at least one kind of surface, has a similar definition to, to how it works in 3D. Basically, you start with a flat plane. It's not really a plane because it's not two-dimensional. It's a, it's a three-dimensional plane. But you start with a three-dimensional space, and then you add some four-dimensional height to it. And there's two ways to think about this. You can think about it as really adding height through a fourth dimension, which is unfamiliar to us, and so it's kind of difficult to visualize. But you can also think about it as just associating like a color with every point in space, and, and, and that lets you draw a picture of a four-dimensional surface. So this, this is a, and here you're just seeing it from different angles, um, this is a four-dimensional surface drawn in 3D that's sort of like the four-dimensional version of the surface we saw that was sort of ripply. This has sort of hills and basins interspersed. Um, and we can use this to answer questions about 4D geometry in a way that's, that's totally intuitive. It doesn't require any kind of difficult math. So if I drop a marble down on the on sort of the right edge of that of that orange blob there, which remember represents like a hill, and if we keep in mind that um, gravity on the surface acts in the in the height direction, which means in, in the dimension represented by color here and along that fourth dimension, which way is that ball going to roll? Do I, do I have any takers? <laughs> it's it's going to roll towards the blue. Um, yeah. So, so <laughs> it's gonna roll. It's, it's going to roll towards the blue. Um, and you, you just solved basically a four-dimensional physics problem, which is, which is how is this thing going to roll on this four-dimensional surface? And it wasn't hard. That's my point. <laughs> it, was, it, was, it was very straightforward, even though it's a four-dimensional physics problem. And, um, and, and I hope, I hope that, that I've convinced you that these things really can, can be understood intuitively. Um, okay, so we've gotten that out of the way, but what we really want to understand is that crazy diagram at the beginning, or that hypercube. <laughs> Um, and, uh, and so we're, we're going we're gonna to jump into understanding cubes now. And uh, if there's one other thing that you take away from this presentation, or that, that, that I hope that you take away, um, it's that our brains are more amazing than our eyes. Because our eyes are flat. Our eyes are two-dimensional. Um, we have two of them, so we can, we can perceive depth a little bit. But basically, we see the world in these, in these flat snapshots. Um, and we can't, for example, tell if something is small or far away. Those are the same to us. Um, and yet, the world feels three-dimensional to us, and we have a very good understanding of how it works um, three-dimensionally, and how motion and shape and, and all those things work. Oh, that says three cubes up there. Um, work in 3D. And, um, and the way that we make sense of that is that we use context and we see things through all sorts of different angles with our, with our flat two-dimensional eyes. Um, and, and, and we infer and we analyze, and eventually we figure out the 3D shape of things, and we do it completely automatically and naturally, and we're great at it. Um, and I contend that if we're able to experience a 3D universe with 2D eyes, then there's no reason we can't experience a 4D universe with 2D eyes, because um, we're, we're, we're already very good at <coughs> figuring out high dimensions from what. Um, so, so how do we experience a 3D universe? How do we experience a 3D cube? Well, um, if, 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 when you're looking at a cube, and imagine you're looking at it straight on, um, what it looks like is, uh, is first you have the, the near side, which we'll represent in blue here. Um, and then there's a far side that's the same as the other side, but it, it looks smaller and it looks like it's inside the near side just because it's farther away and it's separated in that third dimension, which is the dimension that you're, you're looking along. Um, and of course, the, the cube's a, a solid object, so there's, there's connectors between the near side and the far side. Um, and, uh, and, and so that, that's what a cube looks like from one angle, but as I said, you can only really get a sense for what its three dimensional shape is if you see it from any different angles. So you have to turn the cube in order to really see it three dimensionally. Um, so we'll pick some way to turn it, and let's say we're turning it sort of um, like, like, like this, sort of right to left on the near side. Um, what's going to do as, as it turns it? How, how is that motion going to correspond to its, its shape and space? Um, well, we know that uh, what's going to happen over time is that the near side and the far side are going to trade places, because that's the way we're rotating it. Um, and so the, the near side is going to become the far side, and so it's going to get farther away and, and, and look like it's shrinking, even though that's just because it's getting farther. Um, and the near side's going to do the opposite. It's going to grow because it's getting closer. 
And, um, but that's not all that's going to happen. It's not just going to be two squares that get like, bigger and smaller. It's going to do a, a, a sort of crazy little dance on the way there. Um, and, and the reason that it's doing that is that it's, uh, is that as these things turn, you start seeing them at an angle. And as you see them at an angle, some parts are closer and some parts are farther, and so some parts are bigger and smaller. Um, and, uh, and, and the way that this works in particular is, well, first of all, you, you know that the, the near side is going to be moving left in general, and the far side is going to be moving right because they're on opposite sides of the cube, and that's the way we're rotating it. Um, but there's other things that are going to be happening too, and that's what's going to make it sort of distort, appear to distort as we turn it. Um, and so what, what's going to happen is that the, uh, the right side of both the near side and the far side, those are both moving towards you as the cube starts turning. And since they're moving towards you, they're going to get bigger. So the, the, the right side of both of, 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 of the whole cube um, is, is going to sort of appear to expand as it gets closer to you. And since the far side and since the left sides are treating, it's, it's going to look like it's doing the same thing. And so what we expect to happen, and this is just a description of something that, that we see every day, is that, um, is that things are going to sort of warp as certain sides get bigger and smaller. Um, things are going to trade places. Things are going to get bigger and smaller. Uh, and of course, what, what this looks like is it looks like this. Um, and because we're used to interpreting the 3D world with our 2D eyes, mm -hmm. uh, we're very used to looking at this cube and just saying, oh, that's, that's a rotating cube. But imagine you've been blind from birth. And imagine that science has just restored your sight for the first time. You might look at this and you might say, well, that's a lot of lines and squares doing some really crazy things. And it looks like, it looks like it's turning itself inside out. Um, and in fact, what, what the projection of the, of the cube is doing is exactly that. It's, it's turning itself inside out. But that's, that's real and only a trick because of the way that we're, that we're seeing it with farther things looking smaller. Um, and, uh, and I want you to keep in mind how this rotating cube looks because it's how the four-dimensional cube is going to look too. And there's nothing, there's nothing really crazy going on here. It just looks crazy because it's being projected. Um, so how, do we, how can we apply this and, and, and extend it to... Uh, to, to a four-dimensional cube. Well, um, the rule that we're going to use here is that with our, with our ability, with our newfound ability to see in the fourth dimension, um, or a fourth dimension, uh, basically things that are farther away in the direction that we're looking, which is, which is a fourth dimension that we can't directly see, things that are farther away in the dimension that we're looking are going to look smaller. And otherwise, 3D things that are in the three dimensions that aren't the direction we're looking are, are just going to look normal. So what this means concretely is that if you have a four-dimensional cube, that cube, first of all, has a near side. And that near side is an entire 3D cube, for the same reason that the near side of a cube is, a, is an entire two-dimensional square. So this, this entire blue near cube is one distance from us in, in that fourth dimension. It's, it's, it's just sort of right in front of our eyes. And then this cube also has a far side, which is the same as the near side, but it's a bit farther away. Um, and it looks smaller because it's farther away. But it's exact, in, four, in, in the four-dimensional reality, it's exact same size as the near side, and it's separated from it in that fourth dimension that, that, that's the dimension we're looking. Um, and because it's a solid object, the near side and the far side are connected. Um, same reason as the cube, and so we're, we're, look, we're sort of looking down the barrel of this 4D cube. And, but of course, just looking at this as a static image doesn't actually tell us the full sort of structure of it, because you have to turn something around to really see it. Same as in 3D. Uh, so, so how can we look at this from different angles? Well, we can turn it. And we'll turn it in that, in that fourth dimension that we can only sort of indirectly see. Um, so what that means is we're, we're going to be doing the same thing. We're going to be turning it both sort of exchanging left and right and um, exchanging front and back, which is exchanging that, that fourth dimension. So it's going to be rotating through that fourth dimension partially. Um, and as we rotate it that way, we're, we're going to see it um, we're going to see it from different angles. And what's that going to look like? Well, we know that the, that the front and back are trading places. The, the blue near side and the red far side are, uh, are changing places. So the blue near side is, over time, on average, going to shrink and, and, and go into the position that the, that the far side's in right now, which is that red cube. Uh, and the far side's going to grow and, and become the, the near side. Uh, but how are they going to do that? Well, they're going to do a crazy dance again. Um, and, and the way that happens is because we're rotating sort of right to left, the um, the near side is going to look like it's sort of in general moving left, at least at the beginning, and the far side is going to look like it's moving right because it's on the other side of the cube uh, across that, that four-dimensional distance. Um, and, but it's also going to warp a bit because the right side, which is the entire sort of right-hand edge square of both the near side and the far side, those right sides are coming closer to us in that fourth dimension, the dimension we're looking in, 
And, um, and as they come closer, that's they're going to look like they get bigger, which is just because they're coming closer. And the left, the, the, the left faces of, um, of both sides are, for the same reason, retreating away from us in, in four dimensions as, as it turns. And so they're going to look like they're getting smaller. And so if we just look at this, with what we predict, just entirely based on the geometry of it, is that um, the, the near and the far side are going are to trade places because of the way we're turning it. Um, these, these, these cubes are going to distort. They're, they're going to have one side get bigger and one side get smaller. And they're going to sort of twist in on each other until they've, until they've <laughs> traded places. And this is exactly what we see. So, if we wait for it to return to its initial position, keep in mind that the actual four-dimensional cube we're seeing here is totally rigid. It's not, it's not doing anything really unusual or, or spectacular. But we're turning it, and, and as we turn it, we see it at different angles, different camera angles, so to speak. And, and it looks different from those different angles, and it makes it look like it's twisting in on itself. But that's just because we've been blind since birth, and we can just suddenly now see. And, and we're not used to making sense of what our eyes are telling us. But, 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 but really, we're just we're seeing that far side become the near side, <coughs> that near side become the far side, and some parts get closer and farther and look larger and smaller. So this is the same animation we started with. We've added a little bit of color to it, but it's the same mystifying, terrifying animation of the fourth dimension, <laughs> um, which I'm, I'm actually really convinced is, is, is usually shown mainly to intimidate people, mainly to say, like, wow, look at the amazing exotic stuff the fourth dimension has. Um, but it's, all, it's actually a great illustration tool once, once you know how to interpret it, only once you know how to interpret it, um, because it, it lets you see the fourth dimension just as well as we see uh, the, the third dimension. So I, I hope that's, that's at least giving you a, a taste of, of the fact that you really could, um, you know, with, with enough patience and, and enough experience with things like this, learn to, to dream in a fourth dimension. Mm -hmm. so, uh, I don't know if anyone has any questions. Did yeah? you make those moving graphics? I, you... I did, yeah. Wow. <laughs> yeah? I was wondering, so you showed the, the diagram of the rotating 3D cube, uh, you know, it's like projected on a two-dimensional space. Do you think we'd be able to understand the four-dimensional cube better if it were holographically projected into three-dimensional space? Yes. And rotating <laughs> down? Yeah. Yes. Because I, I, right now we're still looking at a, a two-dimensional projection of four-dimensional space. I, 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 yes, that, that's true. There's, I, I, I did sort of skip over the fact that there's, there are two projections happening here, because this is... This is what a four-dimensional creature would see on their three-dimensional eyes, but we have two-dimensional eyes, so we have to project it onto a 2D plane with a second projection step. Um, and, uh, and, and yes, it would be easier if we could use our depth perception a bit to, to see it a bit better. That would probably be a good virtual reality application. Um, but the, uh, w w one neat thing is that you can actually keep changing the, project the projections, and you could, for example, project a five-dimensional shape into a four-dimensional space, into a three-dimensional space, into a two-dimensional space, and then look at it. And every step, it gets much harder. But you can do it. And, and there's really no limit. And, and also, every step, of course, you get more camera angles. Because we can see this cube, which has a very 4D camera angle, at different 3D camera angles as well. And so it, it starts getting very complicated very quickly as you go to higher dimensions. But